All right, so this is for any of you who just got a new Super Note, whether it's the Manta or the Nomad, all these should apply to both unless otherwise specified. All right, so the first tip is about the layout of the software, which there is not a lot you can do customization wise, but there is some things you can do here. For example, you can change the font size. It defaults to this size of font, as you can see over here. I like to make it even smaller, but if you're looking to make it even larger, this is where you would do that as well. And then when you go to the notes section, this is how it lays it out by default. This is how your notes look. This is how your folders look. And they're kind of in this list with some icons next to them. There are other layout styles though. If you just tap this icon in the corner here, this has quickly become one of my favorites, if not my favorite layout style. This is a grid view. And in each of these folders, you can see up to four different notes you use in that folder and preview what they are, which I really, really like that. And then all the other notes are just kind of full size and outside here. But if you want it really condensed, you can go to this other list option, which just makes everything small. No icon besides showing if they're a text conversion document or a folder, which this is nice if you just want to see a lot on one screen at a time. Then the second tip is also about customization. That's just your screensaver here. And I think this is a great thing to customize. And especially if you come from Remarkable or if you're familiar with those devices, they don't allow any customization with this whatsoever. So it has these three built in. So even if you don't want to add your own, you do have some options here. This was the default one, which is cool, but I mean, come on, you want to add some of your own flair to your own device. So of course I had to put graphics tech on there. So when I put it to sleep, that's what I see. And that looks great to me. Then also in settings here, assuming you're signed into your account, which you can do right from the my account section here. If you're not, you can go to drive Supernote cloud, which is what I use. You can use one of these others as backups as well. But the benefit of using the Supernote cloud is you can use the partner app and see everything you're doing on your phone or your computer which is so nice and their app has gotten a lot better actually. And I really like to use it. The only app that beats it as far as an e -ink companion app is Remarkable's companion app. They allow you to edit the documents too and Supernote does not do that, but basically anything else they do have. So I have mine set to auto sync here. So that way whenever I'm connected to a Wi-Fi that I've signed into before, it will just back it up and make my phone version as up to date as possible. And since I have a Nomad as well, it will also make that as up to date as possible as well. But if you only want certain folders to sync and certain ones not to, like if you have some special top secret stuff or things you just don't want getting out there, you can customize that. You can even uncheck the notes one here and go into it and then only check certain folders that you want to be synced. And then you just hit save and it switches that for you as well. I'm just gonna leave it on everything for now as nothing of mine is super sensitive. So I'm not too worried about security there. I will say as a warning, if you're using auto sync and if you have a Nomad and a Manta, watch a couple of my YouTube shorts about some of the syncing problems and things that I've had. And the biggest takeaway from that is just when you're done in a note, exit out of the note, let it sync, then open that note on your other device. Otherwise you might get it to sync a previous version and kind of lose some progress there. So just be a little cautious of that. And if you just don't want to risk it, then don't have them sync to each other at all. And that's fine too. And something else I recommend at least checking out right away and probably downloading is going to the Supernote app store which has two apps. It's not really much of an app store, but it's there. And the Atelier app is their drawing app. And if you want to do any actual drawing on this device, do it in this app. Trust me, it's gonna be better than just a regular notes. You're gonna get pencil tools that you can use as well that are much more pressure sensitive and all that stuff. It's just gonna be tuned for drawing a little bit more so than note taking and you can zoom out, you can zoom in, and just have a bigger canvas to work with on this device. 
and that is gonna be great for all you artists out there. I'm not really much of an artist, so I probably won't be using this app too much, but even I still downloaded it just in case I wanna try it out and doodle a little bit. It's a nice option to have. And the other one here is the Kindle app and Supernotes Reader is fine for PDFs. I think they handle them pretty well, but when you go to actual books and stuff like that, it's not phenomenal. So I recommend just using the Kindle app and it will do the best it can. It's still an e-ink screen, so there's gonna be some slowdowns and some inconsistencies, but overall it should be a pretty good experience using the Kindle app. And especially if you have a Kindle library already, this is a great option. Piggybacking off the app store though, if you go into security and privacy, you can activate side loading and it gives you kind of a disclaimer of what the possible downsides could be. So if you want to enable that, then you can sideload any kind of reader app or anything like that that you want to put on your Supernote device. And my last little tip is some notebook settings that you should probably change or do. One of which is just look at the sidebar here. Quick access, no items yet. That just looks sad. We gotta get some items on there. So on the Manta, this should be shown right on your sidebar. It's like a link and a plus icon. And you can add either the current page or the current note to that quick access sidebar. I usually do the current note because it'll always go to your last open page on that notebook. But yeah, fill this up, add some notes. You can add PDFs here too, and it will go into the document reader and all that kind of stuff. So you don't have to just do notes there, but that is super handy to go between your most used notebooks and documents. Also, if you have a Nomad, you find the option to add the notebook to quick access in the three dots part of the menu. But in both of them, there is preferences in here and you can turn on handwriting anti-aliasing. You can also change what buttons are displayed on the floating toolbar and the page number position. Or if you really don't want it to recognize the star mark, you can turn that off as well. That's on by default. But handwriting anti-aliasing is not on by default. So I turned this on and tried doing some handwriting and I could notice a little bit of improvement. I made a YouTube short on it, so go ahead and check that out as well. But I at least give it a try, see if you notice any better handwriting with that enabled or if you notice worse. I'm curious on your thoughts on that, but it is a good thing to try nonetheless. So that's roughly the five major things that I'd recommend at least checking out or changing on your new Supernote device. Let me know if you guys learned something new or if you figured all that out pretty easily. Or if you want a follow-up video to this, finding even more obscure settings in the Supernote devices that I can look into for you guys. I'd love to do more of this kind of stuff. So if it interests you, definitely let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and comment below. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Every new subscriber is a way for us to grow and reach even more people. And that is very helpful. And I want to get to know each and every one of you. If any of you ever have a question or a topic you want me to look into, just leave a comment and I will do my best to look into it. I try to answer every comment that comes across the channel. And I really want to be a resource and a help to all you guys out there. And if you're curious about any of the equipment I use, it's all going to be linked in the description down below. And as always, have a great rest of your day.